Hello everyone. Our today's topic is definite integral as a limit of sum. Before we start with definite integral as a limit of sum, it is important to understand the meaning of definite integral. The physical significance of definite integral is area under the curve on x-axis from point x equals to a to point x equals to b. So, my friends, definite integral a to b fx dx is nothing but area under the given curve as shown in the figure. It means if we find the area under the curve, that area under the curve will be equal to definite integral a to b fx dx. Now, let's see how can we find the area under the given curve. The region under the curve from point x equals to a to point x equals to b. Suppose, let me divide this region into different rectangles. Now, if you observe carefully, the area of the rectangles, sum of areas of rectangles is less than the area under the curve from point x equal to a to point x equal to b. In case, if I increase the number of rectangles, what will happen? The area will become closer to the area under the curve, that is the required area. If we further increase the number of rectangles, the gap between some of areas of rectangle and area under the curve will further reduce. Again, further increasing number of rectangles, again, the area of rectangles will go closer and closer to the area under the curve. That is the required area or we can say the definite integral from a to b fx dx. In case the number of rectangles are sufficiently increased or you can say approaches infinity, some of areas of these rectangles will be exactly equal to area under the curve from point A to point B. Let us consider that width of each rectangle be H and number of rectangles be N. Now the area, the sum of areas of these rectangles will be equal to area under the curve if and only if our n approaches infinity means number of rectangles approaches infinity and h approaches zero h means width of each rectangle means width of each rectangle must be infinitely small means approaching zero now our next step is to find the area of each rectangle so that we can add these areas and we can find the total area under the curve which is nothing but a definite integral a to b fx dx. Let's see, in first rectangle, the distance of point capital A from y axis is equal to small a. And width of each rectangle we have already considered is equal to small h. Now, the y coordinate of point P will give me the height of first rectangle and the y coordinate of point P is nothing but function of small a, f of a. Reason, because x coordinate of point P is a small a, so y coordinate has to be f of small a, that is function of small a. So I got the dimensions of first rectangle, its width is equal to h and its height is equal to f of a means the area of a first rectangle is equal to h times f of a. Now in case of second rectangle, the width is again equal to small h and as far as height h is concerned will be equal to the y coordinate of point capital Q. And y coordinate of point capital Q is nothing but f of a plus h because the x coordinate of point capital Q is a plus h. Hence, the y coordinate has to be function of a plus h. So, the dimensions of second rectangles width is equal to small h and height is equal to f of a plus h. Hence, the area is h times f of a plus h. Similarly, the dimensions of nth rectangle will be its width will be again equal to small h and height will be equal to f of a plus n minus 1 times h. So, we got the areas of all the rectangles. The area of first rectangle is h times f of a. Second one is h times f of a plus h. Third one is 
h times f of a plus 2 h and the nth one is h times f of a plus n minus 1 times h and the sum of all these areas will give me the area under the curve. Hence, definite integral a to b fx dx is nothing but equal to h times we can take h common because h is there in each term so h common h times f of a plus f of a plus h plus f of a plus 2h up to f of a plus n minus 1 times h and do not forget to put limit h tends to 0 because area of sum of rectangles will be equal to area under the curve if and only if the width of each rectangle approaches 0 or you can say the number of rectangles approaches infinity. So that's all for today. Friends, see you next time.